Welcome, Dadas, all over Kenya. Uh, if it's Sunday, it's 4 p.m., you're watching the Dadas Show on KBC Channel 1. Thank you so much for watching us. Uh, today, we want to talk about careers. You, if you're like me, me, I'm pretty old school, very old. You have probably had uh, a, career, a careers day or a careers mentor, and all they told you was that if you, uh, uh, if you got a grade from A to C, you are doing okay, you'd, get, you'd be a professional, and anything other than that, you are going to become a Juakali practitioner and be poor for the rest of your life. Well, today my guest is going to dis demystify all that. Her name is Koi Bantu, but I want her to introduce herself. I like people to introduce themselves okay. so I don't mutilate your, <laughs> your huge <laughs> portfolio. Okay. So welcome, Karibu. Thank you so much Tell us a bit about me. yourself. Thank you so much for inviting me. Cool. Uh, my name is Susan, as you call me Koi, Susan Bantu. Uh, Susan Bantu is, uh, is in mental health. I'm a mental health professional, but currently I'm very passionate about career mentoring. And uh, why career mentoring is because, as you said, uh, a lot of young people have been left out because they don't fit within the A and B to C grades. And so they think that because you get a grade be below that, then you actually are not included into a career field. And so that's one of the things I've devoted myself to doing. I'm also a mother of two girls, they're teenagers. And so you can imagine the message that I'm preaching, I'm also doing the same in my home, making mm. sure that they are choosing careers that are going to benefit them. And as now, as we've said, we have the new normal. Uh, careers are changing, things are shifting. Uh, new careers are coming up. The very uh, lucrative ones we thought were there are no, going. Do doctors. Yes. <laughs> and so we need to rethink this particular thing. And that's, I'm also the host uh, of a program on YouTube known as My Career Mentor with Sue. And so that's what really I'm doing, interviewing mentors okay. and coming up with uh, just a message for young people to take home. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Talking about careers, mm -hmm. I am very excited to ask you of your journey uh -huh. because did you wake up and know you are a, you ha, you are doing extremely complex things? Uh -huh. You are a counseling psychologist. I know you 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 counsel people. You have you you counsel people because mm -hmm. I've seen now you are doing tele yeah. tele counseling. Yeah, you do careers. Mm -hmm. You've had a long journey to get to where you are today. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a bit about that? How did it all start? Ah, uh, well, it's been a long journey. Uh, I started off, I would say, when I discovered I want to be a mentor, a counseling psychologist, it all started here in Kenya at the Wangari Madhai Empowerment Center. Wangari Madhai began an empowerment center, which was uh, funded by the Norwegian government. And what uh, she did was bring young people together who had just finished high school. And she wanted them to be change makers. She wasn't very pleased about the political system then. And so she decided to pick up a few of us. I was actually like sort of the dean of students. And I sort of helped with the, uh, coming up with the program, mentoring students, and also helping them to be these change makers. So part of it was about politics, about society, about issues to be uh, their psychological well-being mm -hmm. and things like that. So I got an opportunity, uh, I left the Hungarian Empowerment Center and went off to the United States. And in the US, uh, St. Lawrence sponsored me to go for a program which was uh, known as the Swahili Fellowship. And it's there that they gave me a chance to go in and do my master's in counseling psychology. Uh, it's called Counseling and Human Development. Okay. And that is where my journey started. And I must say that it is mentors. Uh, I had a mentor, Dr. Arthur Clark, uh, who was a professor at the university who really talked to me about how I can be able to help the school systems back in Kenya okay. uh, to be able to rethink about mental health, which we know um, has issues in the country, and also just be able to help students who are also struggling okay. in terms of their career. So that's where I think my journey started, and I'm very pleased to actually make it grow right now okay. uh, using this forum, yeah. You know, Koi, listening mm -hmm. to you, mm -hmm. it's very frightening because you sound like, oh my God, all put together. But I know <laughs> that you went through a time like, like a normal Kenya. Uh -huh. When you went to school, where did you go to school? How did you go to secondary school, university? Uh -huh. How did you choose? How did you end up at the Wangari Mother? You know, the backstory yes. of the Wangari Mother <laughs> world is very. <laughs> okay. I went to Kenny Girls High School. That's yes. in Embu, Kenya, a beautiful, wonderful place. Yeah. 
And one of the things is that it really shaped me to the person I am today, Kenny Girls. And but what I noticed later on in life is that there wasn't a real career guidance or mentorship. What happened was if you're an A student, this were your careers. You had a form. If you're a B student, this is where you're supposed to do. If you're C, only C plus, maybe. Mm -hmm. But the rest of you, everyone else who never had a good grade would watch like where do we go to? So it was sort of a very tiered system where only the people who performed well yeah. were able to get into certain careers. So in terms of it was only academic, mm -hmm. yes. first of all it was academic yes. education, yes. which was, in my opinion, glorified. Yes. Like if you had the brain for academia. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there was no sports, there was uh, no, uh, no arts, mm -hmm. there was no nothing, just nothing. academia. Nothing. And academia is passing exams. Just so, academia. Exactly. So if you pass, if, if we know that we you you're good in uh, academia then we expect you to go to university mm -hmm. i think that's what it was all about yes. so go to university and do the following yeah and a b do the following mm -hmm. and c do the following yes i think for me my question to you was at that time uh -huh. when you think back yeah what was your career teacher thinking was there any career teacher was there anybody who knew anything about uh, careers that's the problem okay there was no one who actually told us what this is all about okay and it's interesting that all we did was we were just given a list. Nobody mm -hmm. told you what this career was. Because I ended up being taken at the University of Nairobi to take anthropology. Oh, wow. To be honest with you, Pauline, I didn't know what anthropology was. So why is somebody throwing me into a deep pool and telling me uh, on the deep end and telling me I'm going to take anthropology? What, what did you choose, though? What did you choose? Because I remember we were choosing. You, can you, you know, you have remember? to choose engineering. Yeah. Those were the things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want to a be a lawyer. a lawyer. You want to be a doctor. Because I had good grades. I didn't okay. uh, fall yeah. within that. And so I chose those particular careers. And then when the grades came back, I got a B plus. And so I found myself into, I was picked for anthropology. Wow. And so I enter this class and I'm wondering what this is all about. Mm -hmm. And it was really, and all of us were confused. Many people were called for things that they didn't really want to become. Okay. And the problem with that is that many of us went on to do now our master's programs in things that we were interested in. So we wasted four years. Not only that, yes. but think about it like this, Koi. Mm -hmm. You know how expensive, because you're in education, you know how yeah. expensive it is mm -hmm. to educate somebody. Yeah. Even if you're giving them a loan. So when you educate them in their first degree on mm. something they don't care about, yeah. it means you've actually wasted their time. Yeah. So not only have you wasted their time, and you've, you've wasted their money, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. But so you, did you go through an anthropology? Did you go through no. the process? And mm -mm. did you feel like a fish out of water, or what did you do? Okay, I attended a few classes of anthropology. I must tell you, I didn't like it at all, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, so I found my way through, through yeah, a lot of I ESA. <laughs> yeah, so, so you, you go you to some that, office and beg and, and beg and beg and beg and talk your way out. And then they said, well, there's a space in political science, which was called government and in literature, which I loved literature. Yeah. So I got into it. Mm. So it had to do with a little, mm. you know, doing some panya roots. But so that you, you were get into it. to actually yes, do that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I was placed into that. Um, and then luckily I got into political science and literature, okay. uh, which literature was my passion, political science. I sort of said, well, I can find out a little bit. So I began to enjoy okay. uh, my, my, move, uh, my move into that particular uh, academic field. And then when I finished with that, uh, I went into Kameme FM. That's mm -hmm. where I worked at Kameme FM. I got a chance to go into media. Mm -hmm. And I did one year in Kameme. And then I got a scholarship to go to Ohio State University. Oh, wow, and this was to study African studies. So I was still in the political science yeah. field. I went out there, studied, came back to Kenya, tried to look for a job. <laughs> you had a degree. You had, a, you had two degrees. <laughs> yes, I had two degrees. You and I was there two feeling two hot. bachelor's degree. <laughs> I had a bachelor, so had a bachelor and, a and a master's degree. Yes. One from Nairobi University. And one the from the Nairobi U.S. Nairobi University yes. and another from a U.S. University. Yes, and I was feeling, wow, yes. I'm going to come back, get a job. And I mean, you were pretty come. young. Really, yes, you I was. It. You were a was. young, hot chick with, <laughs> with a master's. Yes. And so you came back and people There was no job. <laughs> <laughs> what is African <laughs> studies, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so again, six years gone. I've still not found what I want to do. Okay. So
so that's when I got into the Wangari Mother Empowerment okay. Center. After that, just sort of, it was mostly volunteer. It wasn't really that kind mm. of a job. And so I got this fellowship and went back. That's what I was talking about. Now yeah. going back into yeah. counseling psychology, and that's where I found my calling. So yeah. the minute you, you understood where you were supposed to be, yes. you began to blossom yes. because you were in, you are now a fish in water. Yes, Not exactly. a fish on a tree. No, 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 okay. I wasn't here. Yeah. That's mm. great. Yeah. So what is counseling psychology? You know, <laughs> we don't know what those words mean. What, what is that? I will talk about psychology, which is, it's a branch of psychology. So psychology is, study, is a study of human behavior okay. and the human mind. Okay. Just understanding the human mind and human behavior. And everything in this particular world has revolves around psychology. We are all behaving right now, even in this show. Yes, yes. We have to sit in a certain way. We have a certain decorum. Uh, we can't behave in this particular situation that we behave in a football field and so on. So it's all about human behavior and the human mind. I also teach psychology okay. uh, in an international school, and so I impact a lot uh, on an A-level, um, to the A-level students who want to go on and pursue a career in psychology. This sounds so, like yeah. something mm -hmm. everybody should be doing. Yeah, it's psychology. actually lucrative. Yeah, it is good. Okay. Uh, but the problem with psychology in the country right now is that... I don't think the African mind has really adjusted into counseling. Uh, we almost feel that we can be able to sort out the issues ourselves, or you can talk to someone who's not a professional and get into it. But I think that as issues are coming up with the young, issues with depression, anxiety, uh, suicide rates are very, very high right now. And uh, you know, the COVID-19 issues, mental health has become quite big. And it is this time that I'm finding myself being called to forums, to webinars, to train people. I've done lo lots of proposals right now to, to go out and mentor people and train people into mental health. So it is getting bigger now. Okay. And as we say in careers, this is one of the careers that is growing yeah. amidst the COVID-19 situation. Okay. Yes. This is going to be one of the big careers, mm -hmm. I think, even in the future. Yes. Because people are beginning to understand that it's not enough to be physically fit. Yes. You must be mentally mm -hmm. fit to survive mm -hmm. exactly. things. And so I think you guys are going to have lots mm. of work mm. uh, while we talk about when we talk about careers mm -hmm. i think let me go back to that yeah it sounds stupid to ask this question mm -hmm. but why is a career fit important because i think as you know old school we mm. were told go to school get a job yeah buy a house have a family mm -hmm then retire, go to the rural area and die. That was the pattern. Mm -hmm. So the whole career conversation is a, really a new conversation mm -hmm. when you think about it. Yeah. It's pretty new. I think it's maybe a decade or two, yeah. two decades old. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, the olden days, our fathers, our mothers, they were teachers, they were doctors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They did, even if you didn't want to do yeah. anything, you, mm -hmm. you, know, you just went, yes. you did a job, you got kids, you took mm -hmm. them to school, you... Mm -hmm. You lived. Yeah. So now suddenly people are big on career. Why is, it, why is it even important? I think career fits are important. First of all, using my own story, don't waste a lot of time. And now what we're seeing with careers is that it's career advice and career mentorship is for the very wealthy. Mm. You get that. Um, it is when I went to the U.S. that I discovered that there were departments there were offices that were set aside in every single school with guidance counselors to walk them through careers, what to apply for in university, which courses to take. They did performance and all these psychometric tests to, to show people exactly what's your strength. Now, if we come back to Kenya, who is doing that? We only have that in some of the top mm. private schools. Those are the only ones that will have offices dedicated to students to actually choose their careers and go into what they want. Why is it that we only have a small percentage of students who know exactly what they're going into? Okay. And they're the ones who are taking up places in the Harvards, in the Princetons, in all the Ivy Leagues, in the UK, in the US, Australia, everywhere. They're getting all these opportunities because there are offices dedicated to making sure these students get into correct careers. Okay. Well, the rest of the students who are thousands and thousands of students don't have any form of guidance. Hundreds of thousands of yes, students. Yes, don't have any form of guidance. And so they are all confused taking up all these careers, including myself then. And this is why I'm coming in yeah. and saying, hey, stop. 
I'm in a system where all this advice is given, but mm -hmm. who gives the advice to the Kibera child? Who gives this advice to the Mandera child? Who gives this kind of advice to a child in Embu, where I came from? And so that's what I'm coming in with this particular show mm. to showcase what I do. I know we'll talk about that mm. later, but it's just to showcase all these different careers. Mm. Another thing, another big problem is that, as you said, my parent was a doctor, mm. my parent was an engineer, a nurse. and things like a nurse, a teacher. We need to now demystify these traditional careers. There are too many people in them. Mm. Too many people. Lawyers, how many lawyers graduate in University of Nairobi every year? Will all those lawyers get a job, really? Mm. So we need to start thinking about non-conventional kind of situations okay. so that we can be able to get people into careers. Okay. And so, for example, digital marketing, you know? <laughs> you and I don't know much about it, but it's something the young people are able to come up with and be able to make yeah. into a career. Yeah. So that's why I'm stepping in. I feel that it is time before I retire mm -hmm. and waste away, I feel I need to give that. Oh my God, you're yeah. still young and robust. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I think my other question would be parents. Yes. yes. Parents. Parents. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's the schools, but mm -hmm. then there's also the parents at yes. home. Yes. Now, I, am, I have got some young, very artistic children in my house. Uh -huh. And let me tell you for free. What, do, what are they told every day? Forget about uh, the arts. The arts, mm -hmm. uh, there's no money in the yeah. arts. Mm -hmm. You will just suffer. You will. In fact, do you know there are some people who just say, just look at your mother. Yeah. You don't want to be like your mother. Mm -hmm. You want to be wealthy. So don't forget about the arts. You concentrate on the sciences. Mm -hmm. And I feel that's a bit sad. Yeah. Because people then um, are not, they don't care about the person. Mm -hmm. They don't care what the person will go through in that career. Mm -hmm. What they want is just you know, careers that bring in mm. money. What mm. do you have to say about that? Okay. Psychologically, I think parents are living their dreams through their parents. Uh, their children. Through their children, yes. sorry. They are living their dreams through their children. So this is what is happening. Because I wanted to be successful in a certain career. So I've given birth to these children. I'm paying for their education. Mm -hmm. So they need to go for what I want. So that certificate, that degree, that diploma is for you to to gratify yourself as a parent and it's not for your child yeah. so we are having a lot of conflict i've got so many students who call me who email me uh who talk to me uh on uh, zoom whatever it is and they are talking about please talk to my parents i just need help to convince them that i want to go into music mm -hmm. and not into sciences and the parents are there saying no and when you ask them what's the reason for this, have you thought about it? Music doesn't pay, mm. but chemical engineering does pay. So that's where I want my child to get into. But this child is struggling. They don't know much in physics. Math is an issue, yet you're still forcing them into a career that you know they're going to fail. So what are you doing to your child? Okay. And so one big problem is really parents are pushing students or their children to do things that they don't want to do. And I think that, yes, parents have a point mm -hmm. because they want the best for their children. But at the same time, the children also are dynamic. They are learning. They are reading. These are internet kids. We are talking about the I generation who are looking at Steve Jobs, who are looking at, you know, all these notable characters and seeing that they are making it in their field, in mm -hmm. music, in arts, in all these things that are not sciences. Mm -hmm. And they are seeing that they can excel in that career. Mm -hmm. But their parents are not looking at the same mm -hmm mentors yeah. and so there's a conflict there and i think what we do as our car career mentors is to just bridge the gap yeah. come in between yeah. listen to this side is it the money that you want okay what do you want and then we reach an amicable way of coming up with different ways to look at careers and so we find look at the strengths of the child and then we say this is what they are they're artistic they're not science mm. they're not this mm. and that and so we use a model to be able to you know, place them where they are, and then the child can be able to enjoy. Because yeah. imagine, years of a child not enjoying. How many kids have dropped out of school? Very many. Very many. It's you're sending hard. your kid to the UK, you're mm -hmm. paying millions of money, mm -hmm. and then within two years they've given up, they're depressed in a room. Some of them want to take away their lives because you caused it. Some are on drugs. So even. yeah, some of them are on drugs, they're on alcohol, mm -hmm. they can't be able to hack this thing. So how does it help you as a parent? and you're paying all these millions of money. So I think it's time we have conversations 
with our children. And that's what the African person needs to do. Mm -hmm. Sit down with your child the way we are seated here. Tell me, what are you interested in? What, am I, what is my view about that? And let's reach. At the end of the day, Koi, who wins? I think, yeah. who is supposed to win? Because in my opinion, I yeah. think, this is me being liberal, yeah. the child wins. It's their life. Yeah. Once you've given a little counsel, mm -hmm. I think by the time my children are, you know, in their 20s, I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, you know, if you yeah. are determined, mm -hmm. if this is the career path of your choice, if you're sure this is what you want to do, mm -hmm. I have presented the pros and the cons. Mm -hmm. Good luck to you. For some cases, mm -hmm. maybe you're a different parent, mm -hmm. but in some cases, it's the parent who wins. The parent because they are paying. Yeah. They are the ones who are going to the bank, writing that check to that uni. They are the ones who control much of the decisions, okay. many of those decisions. And also, yeah. when it's a government, like help, yeah. or when it's a government paying, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. the government determines. It's going to determine what kind of course you're going to get into. Okay. Yeah. But nowadays, you can change. Yeah. Just like me, yeah. you can be able to change. Yeah. Does it bother you that in Africa, mm -hmm. we have not yet come up with our own sort of, we have not looked at our context mm -hmm. and come up with careers mm -hmm. to fit, for example, Kenya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it bother you that, uh, for example, mm -hmm. you go somewhere, and mm -hmm. I know I, I talk with yeah. HR practitioners, mm -hmm. and they say, we can't find good people. Yeah. Do, do you find that? Yeah. There's a lot of that, especially on my interviews, when I do my interviews on my career mentor. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I'm realizing is that some of those dynamic careers, the latest 21st mm. century careers, are those that are carried by private universities. Mm. Private universities are very, very accommodative. Strathmore, places like that, will change careers depending on the trends. But we find our mainstream universities are going to stick with the mainstream kind of careers. So I think it's time uh, we, look, we look at the curriculum. Yeah. And look at where is are the opportunities mm -hmm. more of instead of just placing people yeah. into traditional ones. But also at the same time, doesn't mean that if you study anthropology, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> it doesn't mean that you have to be an anthropologist. It can help you with skills into another career. Mm -hmm. So I think that can also uh, help you to sort of get skills. I think what you're talking about is people skills. Uh, which are lacking. Mm. And one of the things I've realized is that a lot of companies, and I was interviewing a human resource professional the other day, is the young generation mm -hmm. is not able to be as patient as we were mm. in terms of salaries and mm. things like that. We want to get quickly. You know, I want to get into the CEO level the moment I enter. And so it's because of this yeah. lowering of money and that's all they're thinking about. Mm -hmm. They're not patient enough mm -hmm. to get through the, you know, uh, the different um, levels mm -hmm. to actually get to where they are. They don't realize that the CEO started somewhere. Yeah. And that's why I'm using their stories, to show them yeah. that I started as a cleaner, but here I am. Mm -hmm. I'm actually in this particular place. And so uh, that's the patience that is lacking okay. in a lot of young people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have to go into a break. When we okay. come back, I want mm -hmm. us to talk about the principles of work because mm -hmm. i think we lack i think when we choose career mm -hmm. we are not thinking about that that is going to be our work yes where we go every day for the rest of our lives mm -hmm. and so that i just wanted to talk about that and also talk about what you're doing okay. with online mm -hmm. and also some of the work you've done in kibira and a yeah. lot of other yeah. things so more solutions mm -hmm. um i think we've highlighted what where the problems are okay. yeah All so right. dadas Thank go you. get yourself a hot tea a cup mm -hmm. of coffee a beverage water water is good mm -hmm. we'll be right back yeah. welcome back dadas we're talking about careers the thing we do the thing that puts bread on the table. Mm -hmm. It could be bread and butter. Yeah. And we are with Koi. Mm -hmm. uh, Koi, I wanted us to talk about careers and work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we choose careers, mm -hmm. I think we are, we are a bit, it's, it's a bit romantic. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, we don't understand what it will actually take for us to work in that career for a long time or mm -hmm. that we're going to spend maybe 40, maybe 30 mm -hmm. or 40 years mm -hmm. at work. Yeah. And so we don't choose them uh, using perhaps the gauge of our gifts, our talents, mm -hmm. our calling, the things we are passionate about. Mm -hmm. What would you say about that? Um, I think, and that's why the career mentorship comes mm -hmm. in. 
we need to choose careers that we enjoy. Uh, we need to choose careers that we are really passionate about. Yeah. And that's why we need to come before the child goes into uh, an academic course. Mm -hmm. Is that something they're going to enjoy? Is that their strength? So we're going to spend, as you said, a lot of years at work. Personally, using my own life, is that with once getting into counseling psychology, which I enjoyed and I've done it for the last uh, 12 years, and it's something I enjoy. It's something that I want to wake up and go to work. In fact, I think my colleagues noticed that, mm -hmm. that I really enjoy working. I enjoy just seeing those students every single day, getting to class, you know, imparting psychology, getting into my counseling room and talking to them about everything, mental health, issues that they have. So for me, it's such an enjoyable thing, such that uh, even at this particular mm -hmm. time when we're having a lot of job cuts, salary cuts, and things like that, I'm still finding myself enjoying it and starting all these forums and doing maybe online counseling, starting my own show, my career mentor with Sue, and doing all those kind of things. They're within the same path. And so I'm so happy about it. I boil at it. Anytime somebody even posts on social media something about careers, and there's a very good forum that has come up. It's called Africa's Leading Ladies. Yes. Yeah, it is on Facebook. And today is, was the day, which is Wednesday. They've got different days mm. uh, where they talk about different careers. Mm. Uh, they talk about mentorship, careers, and things like that. I find myself contributing yeah. so much, and I'm excited about it because that's my passion. Yeah. And I've also been able to get a lot of mentees mm. from that particular forum mm. uh, to be able to now walk through the journey in psychology mm. and counseling. And that has been very fulfilling for me, yeah. Do you know, Sue, mm. when you start talking about <laughs> this, you, you lit up. Yes. <laughs> you literally lit up. Yes. You, became, you started becoming excited. Yes. I think that that's the way people should feel about going to work. Yes. So you never have a bad... It doesn't mean you don't have a bad day, mm -hmm. but you never feel that you hate yes. your job. Mm -hmm. And I think hating your job is the worst possible yeah. thing. Yeah. I love what I do. Mm -hmm. I love media. I've been mm -hmm. in media forever. Yeah. And this is the only thing I know how to do. I've been in front of the camera, behind the camera. Uh -huh. I've written. I've done many things. Yeah. But this is the one thing. Yes. I wake up in the morning and uh -huh. when I'm doing this, I love it. Mm -hmm. So when you mentor people, talk, tell me about your mentorship. What are you doing in your mentorship program? I know you have something on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I know that you do one-on-one -on -one yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. I know you teach. So what are some of the things that you're doing? Uh, in terms of men your okay. mentoring. Before I go how. into that, before yeah. I go into that, I think the passion has also rubbed on my daughter too. Oh, really? She just wants to go into study psychology and public health. Great. So she's very interested in that. And so I think she's watching. It's all about, I think with parents, if you enjoy something you do, then your children watch you. But if you're always coming home complaining, oh my God, I've had this day, my boss has been like that, my colleagues are like that, you're just talking about that mm -hmm. job. Then you tell your child tomorrow, I want you to take up my career. Mm -hmm. They're like, wait a minute, yeah. no. I don't want to come home and complain the same way that you complain. So I think we need to enjoy our jobs. Anyway, next thing is about what I'm doing right mm -hmm. now. So I told you I'm a counseling psychologist, mm -hmm. but on top of that is that I've started my own show. It's called My Career Mentor with mm -hmm. Sue. And what I'm doing is that every single week, I'm interviewing a professional mm -hmm. in a different field. I aim, I know it's a big... <laughs> Thing that I want to do right now. Yeah, I want if it's to, big, that's big. <laughs> <laughs> I want to have at least by the end of this year, I've at least uh, interviewed 50 plus okay. professionals in different career fields. I want that message to be out there. It's a free thing. Um, it's something that any young person or any person who wants to change careers or get more information about their own career mm. that they may not be enjoying, they can tune in, go watch the life of a person i use the storytelling technique where mm. you tell your story mm. and then you impact the other people but the other thing is that the people on my show and there's one thing that anybody i interview on my show they must commit to mentor mm. a person mm. so they must commit so if for example i have i'll name one person i've interviewed melanie hapisu she's a digital marketer and so one of the things is that even after my show she's been able okay. to get people under her wings mm and be able to mentor them into that particular career. Mm. Even people who are not thinking about digital mm. marketing. And so it's a forum that I'm using to reach out to as many people. And why? It's not just on the turf of the very privileged. Anybody with a mobile phone, with data bundles, mm. at any corner of this country, can be able to go on that YouTube channel, search what career they want to mm. do. I want to become a medical doctor. What does it yeah. 
involved becoming a medical doctor. Yeah. We had Dr. Lindsay who came on my show and she was talking about, you know, uh, surgery on cadavers mm. and how she fainted like three, four times mm. before she became a doctor. Mm. And so we need to know what that particular career involves. And that's what I'm trying to do right mm. now. The other thing is uh, with the Tranquility Counseling Forum, uh, I'm doing online counseling, which yeah. is now face-to-face counseling yeah. uh, with people. And so I've, we have this organization with a group of counselors. Yeah. There are a couple of us. Yeah. And so we are taking up different um, counseling loads. Uh, we haven't quite in got mm. much out there because people are still embracing online mm. counseling. Mm. They really love the face-to-face. -face. And uh, so that's what we're doing in terms of So counseling. people are yeah. not yet wanting to go virtual, like yes. on Zoom. Yes, people they are, are a bit suspicious. Eh? Mm, they're a bit suspicious about who's behind that screen. Okay. And people prefer that you do one-on-one -on -one yeah. counseling. Okay. And, you know, with social distancing okay. issues, that can be an issue, but... Um, for me, I just want to stick with the online. I know it will pick up. Mm. I know we've gotten a few people, inquiries, mm. people are also on us. We are cancelling a couple of people, all of us. And um, it's something that is getting there. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. So there's a time you used to go. The, the reason I'm, I know that you have this wonderful opportunity yeah. to, to talk to the top tier of, yeah. of Kenya. Yes. <laughs> and, and that's wonderful. But yeah. let's, let's talk about the child in Kibera. <laughs> The, the child from, you know, from the rural area. Mm -hmm. And these, some of them are absolutely brilliant, mm -hmm. brilliant in academics. Mm -hmm. But they end up wasted because mm -hmm. they end up in the wrong career. They end up unhappy. They end up, you know, sometimes you, you look at people and you realize that they ended up in the wrong career. Yes, yes. And they could have done so much better mm -hmm. because they didn't have the opportunity. Mm -hmm. What can you do for them? Okay. So... I don't just advocate for the top tier yeah, yeah, in the country, the top, top but tier. I know that's who I end up a yeah. lot with. Yeah. Um, but I also work with children in Kibra. And one of the things is that there's a program that was started by the late Honorable Ken Okoth. Mm -hmm. Ken Okoth, I went to school with Ken Okoth oh. at St. Lawrence University in New York. And uh, one of the things when we came back to the country, one of the few who came back, and we decided we needed to do something for the child in Kibra for that child who doesn't have opportunities into careers, into mental health and things like that. So through his Center for Development and Human Rights, uh, we got together and I started a program for teachers. Now what Ken Okoth thought is that the best way to reach the children is through the teachers. And so we started training teachers into issues to do with mental health, with things to do with child abuse issues, because there are a lot uh, in Kibra and the statistics are there. Uh, issues to do with a kind of um, exposure to issues to do with violence and things like that, which Honorable Ken Occult was very passionate about. And he wanted that child to have an opening, mm -hmm. you know, some light at the end of the tunnel, that this is not just what they know mm -hmm. about. Uh, they need to actually develop into people who are reasonable, people who have got into careers, and just like him, mm -hmm. come back to Kibra, mm -hmm. like he did. Look mm -hmm. at all the work he did. Mm -hmm himself alone just come back to Kibra and do the kind of things can you imagine there are many kind of mm. all right mm. so that was his vision so I went into Kibra I had trainings every Saturday and of course there was a bit of resistance sometimes mm. from the government schools mm. but people came the and teachers so you were teachers, mainly talking to the teachers the teachers and okay. people in NGOs okay they were coming into that training forum they'll be provided with a lunch that was lowering also mm. and they'll come in and we talk about all these mental health issues, careers, what to get into, and things like that. Unfortunately, he passed away before we finished. And I hope his brother is going to pick it up because it was a good vision that he had. And so for me, it's not just looking at just the privileged mm -hmm. group, but I'm also looking at the mm -hmm. underprivileged. And that's... And through this particular program, mm -hmm. it's also rich in far and wide. Mm -hmm. So it's not just for the privileged, mm -hmm. but also for yeah. anybody yeah. who wants to access this kind of information. Yeah. yeah. So I know you've, you've done, poli you've done mm -hmm. political science. Mm -hmm. I know you are, you're well-read, you're mm -hmm. well-traveled. What can we do at the government level? What can we do? What, what, what are the standards that you've seen out there that mm -hmm. are things we need to really start thinking about mm -hmm. when it comes to career mentorship? Okay. I did an interview the other day on TV, and one of the things I really spoke to the government is about online learning. Mm -hmm. We have to adopt the new way of life. Look at students around the world. Yeah. They are easily going to school through their computers. 
Remember, there was a laptop project. I know. Remember, there was a laptop. Yeah. Now today, that laptop project would have been very, very. This is very the useful. time would have used it. Who yes. stopped it? I have no idea. Oh Who stopped God. it? There was some politics around that. But that's the because point. every child would have been able to access learning. They would have been in small groups mm. in front of a computer, mm. a laptop, and being able to learn, mm. other than waiting for a TV program mm. and things like that. So one of the things is online learning, is some of the schools are unaffected yeah. because all they need to do Wi-Fi is, you know, a basic need mm. right now. In this country, buying bundles is as expensive as can be. Yeah. So it's very difficult for students to access that, and only people in the cities are able to do online learning. And so even when I find a lot of people saying, oh, my child is being online learning, but then I always go back and say, how about that child who doesn't have? Mm. Yes, your child has had that. Mm. But we all have to repeat mm. classes again mm. and go back to the basics. So mm. one of the things online learning, because I'm not sure the government will be able to set up all the schools to yeah. have all this social distancing yeah. and things like that. First of all, there's two children who still learn in very poor infrastructure. Mm. That has, was not ever done. So what are you thinking about the rural areas? How are, we, how are they going to access learning? Because we have to have school three days mm. sometimes. So today's class one and class two be in school. Tomorrow class three and class four, then class one and class two come back again. So we can be able to use that particular space. So what will those children be doing during that time? Because most of the classes were crowded. Students were sitting in a desk, four students in a desk. So what are we going to do to those classes? Are we building right now? We Is should there be. any school being built right I now? I have not seen I want anything. to see that. I haven't seen anything. I'm not sure any school is being built. So what are we going to do with these students? So I think one of the things is that issues to do with technology need to be a basic mm. need right now. And it needs to be all over the country mm. where we are providing free, all right, infrastructure in terms of this so that people, students can be able to access the basic of these particular opportunities. The other thing is mental health. Uh, do you hear of counselors in public schools? I have never heard. Teachers are the counselors. Yeah, which, which by the way, yeah. I had a discussion with somebody the other day about teachers being mental, um, mm -hmm. being counselors. And yeah. they said it's the worst idea ever. Yeah. Because once you go and tell the teacher mm -hmm. your problem, yeah. the next thing it's in the staff room, everybody's yeah. being discussed. The, then the next thing, the same teacher comes to teach you. Yes. So there's no confidentiality. Yes. So what happens is that teachers can be mentors but they cannot be the professional mental Counselors. health professionals. Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. We need to have a, an office, people who just come. Even if you, the government needs to use, even if you use a couple of counselors mm. who rotate in schools, mm. Monday I'll be in this school, Tuesday I'll be in this school, Wednesday I'll be in this school, they just rotate every one month, at least one full day, they've had exposure mm. to a counselor, would actually eliminate a lot of these issues that are going on. Okay. There's a lot of things that are going on in homes right now. There's a lot of violence, sexual abuse. There's a lot of rape. You can see the pregnancy in children. You can see all these things to do with um, uh, suicidal ideation. There's a lot of that mm. violence towards even children, to children, and things like that. People need mental health. These kids are going to go back to school and give the teachers a hell lot of hardship as they're trying to catch up mm. with the curriculum. That's the problem I had. And when I was talking to the Kibra teachers, they said they were the counselors. They are the counselors. They, they don't have time. They've got a full load. So when are they go to con going to concentrate on these kids? Mm. And it's time, I think, also the government embraces mental health mm. and career mentorship mm. because the same counselors, I'll remember guidance careers, counselors, yeah, can yeah. also be able to help children to be able to come up with careers, mm. work with the different universities, mm both in the country and out of the country. Because we've got things like Wings to Fly. Wings to Fly is very successful. Oh, they hmm. actually put in students on a summer camp. Mm. All right? And what they do is that they train them on all these skills, people skills, everything, they got psychology, everything. They do their SATs. They are taught about their careers, what it involves. And these are kids in high school. That's just a small program. How about all the other kids? So yeah. there are real examples of success yes, stories. They are. They like are. Wings to Fly is a yes, success story. So successful. if you wanted to copy that, copy yes. and paste, mm -hmm. you can actually do it. It can be done. So I wanted to ask you about mm -hmm. parents. Yeah. We now know what the government can do. We know what, uh, we, we know what you know, schools can do. Mm -hmm. Or we think we know what school. What can parents do? Because I think parents are overwhelmed. They are overrun. Mm -hmm. There are careers today that... I suspect will not be there yeah. many years to come. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as we are 
preparing your child, mm -hmm. you need to, we need to start preparing our children for the future. Remember that this future is unknown. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, for many of us, when we were growing up, mm -hmm. my, my mother was a secretary. Yeah. That profession is not there anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no more, longer secretaries. Mm -hmm. I knew people whose parents were uh, worked in offices as uh, typists. Mm -hmm. You know, they had the, yeah. the, the, the typewriter mm -hmm. and the, the mm -hmm. banged away. There's yeah. no longer such jobs. Mm -hmm. Some jobs just because of evolution, they disappear. What, what would you tell parents about how to prepare their children for the future? Mm -hmm. I think parents, first of all, need to do a lot of research. Uh, and I'm talking about the very educated ones because mm -hmm. some of them are not educated and so they might not know what to do. But I'm talking to the very educated ones, do a bit of research. And as I was, uh, I was talking about, for, for example, my show is, talk, is bringing a career field each time. So when your child says, for example, they want to be a DJ, they want to become uh, an actress, just log in, switch on, just try to find out what do these people do other than dismissing a whole career altogether. Because this may be the only careers left which are going to actually help people to develop and make it in their careers. So we need to stop the traditional way of looking at things and start em embracing the new normal. And one of the things, yes, some careers are going to go. We don't know what is going to happen. And right now we are noticing that uh, a lot of employers are realizing that we don't need all these employees. We don't need people coming to the offices. It's a waste of time, a waste of tea and coffee, a waste of all this infrastructure and things like that. People can work from home and we're still uh, as dynamic as can be within our company. So um, we need to, parents need to also embrace. Children are out there. They are watching these shows. They are interacting with social media. They are interacting with technology. And they know what is making out there. Sometimes stop. Stop being the know-it-all. Just stop and listen to your child. What does your child want to do? Yes, we were all medical doctors in our family. We don't have to be all medical doctors. Mm -hmm. Let a DJ be in your family yeah. for a second, yeah? <laughs> Might entertain some of you doctors from your seriousness. So I think we also need to make sure that we are as dynamic as possible, embracing different things. There are very many stories out there, and they are told by people. If you go on YouTube right now, yeah. you'll find so many stories about people who are making it. The other thing is innovation. Mm -hmm. Try to think about what else can we do right now? Grocery business, which we never thought mm -hmm would be something I want to do. Mm. People are packing their Prados, their big cars, their what, and selling Sukumawiki. And just selling it and selling all these groceries to just make a living. And so we need to also get back and look at ourselves and see what kind of careers are going to survive post-COVID. And how are you going to make yourself, create a niche for yourself post-COVID. I was talking to a mechanical engineer the other day, and she was talking about how many opportunities are going to come from mechanical engineering. Many people shied away from it, mm -hmm. especially ladies. Mm -hmm. They don't quite go for mechanical engineering. And so there are a lot of products that are created for women by men. Mm -hmm. And so the women need to also embrace that particular field and get into it. And so there's a lot of opportunities. And if people listened and stopped to watch and listen and get all this advice, and the government also stepped in and gave people the correct advice, other than all this politicking of money and corruption and things like that, who's going to be in 2022 or <laughs> things like that. Mm -hmm. It's really annoying. Some mm -hmm. of us don't watch news because of that. But we need to also come back and look at the young people. Nobody's looking at them. So, yes, thank you for Kazi Kwavijana and things like that. But what, after that, Kazi, what happens mm -hmm. to this particular young mm -hmm. person? Are they going to move into something useful? We also need to think about that. Okay. Yeah. So eventually you would like to put your, your whatever's on mm -hmm. some kind of a platform. So I yes. can go and click. I can go into mycareermentor.com mm -hmm. mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. So I get into the platform and I can click and yes. get information on every yes. career. Exactly. And I can watch the testimonial mm -hmm. maybe as a link. Yes. I go and watch the testimonial of the mm -hmm. person. Exactly. When can this be made available? Or is this like, uh, currently, we already have the... Uh, already. I've already interviewed 10 professionals by yeah. now. Yeah. So I've got a lot of... But actually, many people are interested. Yes. The moment I put up the first particular uh, career mentor, Many people started coming in mm. and saying, I want to talk to young mm. people about this career. Mm. It is good. Nobody's taking it up. Mm. And yet there is need. Mm. Imagine there's so many careers there is need and people are not going into it. Yeah. And so we need 
uh, as much as possible. It's on YouTube. It's called My Career Mentor with mm -hmm. Sue mm -hmm. on YouTube. And what is happening is that I'm putting that forum out there. It's free. Hopefully one day I'll yeah. be able to sit in a setting like this mm -hmm. and be able to interview. It's on low budget, a laptop. Zoom yeah. and an editor. So me, me, I pay miserably. Oh, <laughs> oh, you media houses of yes. Kenya. Where are you? An editor who I pay they, they, miserably. There is a show waiting <laughs> for you. Call my career mentor. Yes, yes. And so it's really uh, invited a lot of interest. It's yeah. just a month old, Ooh, and it's gotten like you know three thousand yeah. views and things like that. So it's really good. Okay. We're starting off, mm. and so we hope that it's gonna be big. The thing is, selling it to schools selling it to universities, colleges, and things like that for free for people to actually watch. I want people to sit down in a class, okay. switch on yeah. with one particular monitor in yeah. front of them, yeah. and maybe a school can have mm. a career week. Mm. Let's look at mechanical engineering. Let's look at an actress. Let's look at architecture. Let's look at um, all these careers I've been to, biochemical engineering, which I've done also on the show. So just sit down and just watch and then together have a discussion yeah. as a class as a school mm -hmm. and then well we'll have some people interested in it depending on your grade yeah, and then you have yeah. the mentor who can yes then, maybe, then mentor maybe, them maybe you do a day with the mentor yes so they can yes go to the location that and, is open yeah. anytime they want that mentor they can be able to do that i have one hotelier i interviewed the other day mm -hmm. steve kenyai He's actually flying into the country because of my career mentor oh. of my show. He's been invited to come and do some training in some hotel in Kenya. Oh. He was living away and he's coming back to train some people on that. Excellent. And, so, and it was as a result of this. People are looking for somebody okay. to help them. And so, yeah, that's what so we're doing. So my final question mm -hmm. to you, Sue. Mm -hmm. Everybody says there are no, there's no jobs. Mm -hmm. Kenya is a dry land. Africa yes. is the land of darkness. There are no mm -hmm. opportunities. Mm -hmm. What would you say to that? I think there are many opportunities. There are very many opportunities in this country if the money was channeled to grow these careers. Okay. That's where the void is. There's so much. I mean, like one of my mentees said in my show, we are importing toothpicks from, mm, from China. I, think it's China. <laughs> I mean, we can make toothpicks mm. in the country. We have a lot of creative timber industry in the country. We can do that and so many other things. We don't need to bring them, but is there? Are there the resources in the country? So I think they need to be made available. There are so many opportunities in this country and there are so many things we haven't tapped into. Mm. There's so, much, there's so much innovation we can get into and we haven't. So I think opportunities are there. We don't need to run abroad. Personally, I went out there, but I came back and decided, you know what? Nitakula hi Kenya, I'll eat here and I'll mm. do my best in this particular country. And, and that's what I'm doing. Your daughters are, are, are yeah. truly Americans. Yes, they and are. And they could be going to, yes. to live abroad. Mm -hmm. My children are Americans. They keep asking me why aren't we in America. Yeah. Uh, but I want to give back to my country. Mm. I've got so much ma uh, passion for this country. And you know, my late husband, uh, Bantu Mwaura, was very passionate about coming back to Kenya yeah. and doing things for this country. And so that is exactly what I'm doing. I'm not leaving. I'm staying half and doing the best for those children <laughs> to make sure that they are well informed about this. I'm doing it with my own money. Okay. Depleting myself, even with all these cuts and things like that, but I'm gonna do it until the very end. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sue. Mm -hmm. I'm so delighted. Please work on the platform. Yes. Whenever you need help, shout, give a shout out. Mm -hmm. We will do what we can. Yes. And I'm sure that if you continue the same momentum, for sure, you are going to go really big. This is a great, great idea mm -hmm. and I'm very honored to have interviewed you on this show because thank I you. may never find you again. Thank you. So thank you, thank all you. of you guys. Mm -hmm. Careers, work, you spend so much time at work. Mm -hmm. It is so important that you choose the right career so that you blossom and grow in it and that's how you become an industry an industry captain like Sue because you're passionate about your job. You wake up every morning and you're excited to go to work. So have an exciting week. Baraka.